My guest today is Nick Kwiatkowski. Nick, how are you today? Doing wonderful. Yourself? I'm doing fantastic. What do you do, Nick? So I'm the uh, telecom engineer and the uh, converged engineer at Michigan State University. Great uh, school. I, yeah, it's a wonderful school. Uh, I also teach there as well. So I teach uh, data communications, uh, cloud computing, and all that fun stuff. Outstanding. As you know, Michigan State is my alma mater. I have a lot of affection for the place. Yes, yes. And your sons, too. And my son played basketball there. Yes. Um, but I'm, let's not talk about me. Let's talk about you. I, uh, <laughs> in right. fact, uh, tell me some of the... I, I know you're working on a lot of cool stuff, but uh, you told me that you're working on something called Di Dialogue Flow. Isn't that right? Yeah. So uh, one of the projects that uh, me and my team are working on is an implementation of Google Dialogue Flow CX. So that's a conversational uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, agent that uh, cloud-based run by Microsoft, or run by Microsoft, run by Google. Yeah, uh -huh. there we go. Uh, but essentially, it allows you to connect uh, uh, telephony solutions and chatbots and uh, SMS systems and all those types of things uh, into a chatbot type system to you know better service customers, uh, better route calls, better do you know all sorts of cool stuff. Right, so, so we've been... said, look, chat chatbot uh, suggests that there's a conversation going on between a human and and, and a bot, a robot, a non-human, yeah. pretend, kind of sort of pretending to be human. Yeah. So uh, when we say chatbots, you know, we're really talking about having a an artificial intelligence machine, you know, agent, something something out there that is acting like a human to allow humans to interact with it like humans. So the conversation that we're having right now, you know, one of us could be a chatbot, one of us could be a voice en voice engine, something like that, to really allow us to to do some sort of action. So you know, the the earlier generations of these were, you know, you go to a web chat system, or you go, you know, think of, or even like when you're like calling in for like you know assistance with your credit card or your cable bill or whatever, you call into these things and you have you're doing very simple instructions. Uh, billing, you know, you say the word billing, or you say the word operator, or you know, some people they plead the word operator or things like that, <laughs> and you're really trying to, uh, in in these more intelligent uh, conversational agents, you're really starting to open it up to be able to talk to it in complete sentences, mm -hmm. and then have the uh, artificial intelligence systems really extract out what are you really trying to say and what's the action you're trying to do, and then program based on that. So the entire systems are really based off of creating intents. So uh, let's say that uh, you're developing one of these systems and the, the most recent one that we did was actually for a hospital system, uh, the hospital system at Michigan State University. Mm -hmm. uh, you can call into one of our clinics and say, hey, I need to talk to somebody about uh, my billing that happened last month. So when you and I hear that type of conversation, we know, okay, you're going to be going to the finance department or the billing department, and you know it's about this latest transaction. We're able to extract that just from hearing that. Right. And that's really what the goal of these types of systems is we start to extract data out of what people are saying. We start to get proper intents out of these things, and we start to you know do more intelligent things with these things. So uh, a really great example of that is, you know, the simple thing of booking an appointment or, you know, again, for one of these uh, clinics, you need to schedule a surgery. One of the goals that we have is really to reduce the amount of time that a person is spending with a very expensive, very expensive uh, agent or in our case, RNs, you know, so the, the simple thing of, you know, selecting the time of an appointment, checking your own calendar, figuring out when they're available, when you're available, you know, all that other type of stuff, find, figuring out how long something would take, you know, is a really expensive process and it uh, takes a lot of back and forth. Yeah. Well, it's not uh, only expensive to the, uh, the company providing that service, but it's also expensive in terms of the wait time because sometimes those people oh, are yeah. available. And so if you can get a, a, a bot on to answer some of their questions earlier. Yeah. That's, that's oh, exactly. Advantage. Yeah, so, you know, those really expensive transactions, the, the hope is that, you know, you in a conversation can start to, you know, with, with one of these systems to be able to extract that data, figure out what the intent is, start to do that really, you know, basic legwork that, you know, anybody could do. And then you transfer or then you give that information to a more expensive agent or more expensive, you know, human worker or whatever you might have. 
in addition to the you know the regular use case of really making like uh, doing these automated uh, database transactions in the background and all that type of stuff, which we've been doing for years. So our health clinic, uh, they came to us and they said, hey, you know, our wait times are just way too long. We're having a real hard time finding qualified people that we can staff, you know, in addition to, you know, having people in there. I mean, which is something we hear about all over the place. So it's really about, okay, so how can we make it easier? One of the first things we did was we said, well, every time somebody calls in for an appointment, we're spending five to six minutes on the phone to create that appointment. What if we collect all that data ahead of time in a conversational type of environment, then deliver it to the agent so they can do that sanity check, so they can talk to the person, make sure everything is good. And now we've reduced what would have been a five minute conversation down to maybe a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. You yeah. still get that human interaction. You still get the confirmation. You know, you don't have to repeat everything. You know, the, you've already done that negotiation. You're just, you know, doing the confirmation piece. Right. And it's really not about, you know, removing the human element from when you're calling into these places or the chat bot, you know, when you're, you're talking back and forth. You know, it's really about, you know, doing the, the really rote and mundane stuff, you know, earlier on so that you, when you're talking with that agent, you're doing the really, you know, nitty gritty, you know, this is something that a human really is best at. Right. Um, yeah, the, the, uh, I think that what you're talking about, this natural language processing, being able to figure yep. out the intent of a sentence from the words, that sounds like such a simple thing because it's so intuitive to humans, but it's a hard computer problem. It took a long time for us to solve that. Yeah, and the neat thing with the Dialogflow CX, it's really, so they, they have it in actually two, they deliver it in two ways. One is like through an API using REST endpoints. You know, that's the same that, you know, you would do with any, you know, comparable system. You know, their Microsoft has some. They have some systems like from Amazon and all the other ones where you can do some of these like, you know, uh, I wouldn't say as much uh, na uh, natural language intents and that type of stuff, but more like, you know, being able to transcribe words and all that type of stuff. But what's neat is they do offer a low code solution. So they have a console, you can go in there and you can literally type in sentences that go towards certain intents. So let's say you are opening up a bike shop and you know, you say, you know, one of the common things would be, when are you open? Well, you and I, you know, might be asking the same question of when are you open, but somebody else might come in and say, what are your hours or uh, that type that's of stuff. One of the reasons why it's such a hard problem. Exactly. So when we start getting into building these intents, uh, the way that their low code solution is, you start typing in four or five sentences, 10, 15 sentences of different ways people would ask that. Right. The machine learning starts figuring out, okay, these are the things that this person is really trying to get at. Like, you know, we're talking about time, we're talking about location, we're talking about this. And it starts building that taxonomy about these different sentences, literally by just typing in random sentences, you know, to build that, that common intent. So that when when that way when somebody you know just off the street starts asking these questions, even if it's not something we exactly program for, if it starts getting close, it starts matching it. Mm -hmm. So that's really where a lot of that power comes in, particularly when you're talking about we're doing these things over the phone, not necessarily even in a chatbot type situation. Because then you know over the phone when we start building that in with you know how do we understand language and all that type of stuff, we start having to worry about dialects and even you know different ways that people from different countries start asking different things. Yes. So it it makes a really cool situation, and uh, you know when we deployed this to a hospital system, it was actually you know pretty pretty risky. You know hospitals, you know we need to make sure we route things the right way and all that type of right. stuff, and we found that we're routing stuff incorrectly very, very rarely. It's more people are frustrated that they're talking to any computer system and they're immediately thinking, oh gosh, is this is gonna be like one of those, you know, when I'm calling in Visa or something like that and I'm gonna be stuck in a menu tree for three hours before I can get right. to somebody. That's usually the frustration people have as opposed to, you know, just the just the way that it's, uh, you know, the routing or things like that. Yeah. Now, uh, you talk about this is a low code situation. Is the promise that uh, someone who is not a software developer would be able to use this solution or do you need to get a technical person involved? So with any low code solution, a, a person who knows absolutely nothing about coding can probably about 80% of the way there. Okay. But that's not to say that they can't figure the rest out. So I actually have some of my analysts who are very much decided they're not programmers whatsoever. One person on my team is a psychologist. Uh, another person grew up in the, you know, in the telephone industry as like, you know, punching down wire and things like that. 
Hmm. They figured this out. And really the more complicated piece that they're dealing with is like conditionals, like the if then statements when we start trying to route different things. So if this user is talking about this particular clinic and they're talking about ours, these are how we do these responses. That's when it th starts to get a little bit more into the, like you need to understand some programming. Okay. The other, the other piece also is, you know, you can start making rest calls out from the system. So again, when we're talking about that appointment piece, I want to talk to a database to figure out when our appointment slots actually available. Then you probably well, have a developer involved. That like you need that to get a developer to be able to, you know, feed you correct data on that. Right. The nice thing is that because it can just talk out REST, like any system, you know, a .NET application, a Java application, or whatever, can start to feed that data back. When you're building these things, are you working inside of a web browser, uh, or are you? Is there a yeah. tool? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's 100% within a web browser. What happens with uh, source control? That's always a challenge for me when I have these tools that are browser based. So uh, Google has done a very rudimentary version of source control. Essentially, you can do um, versioning. So essentially, you can save a version uh, okay. in your in your project, and then that's pretty much it. So you can't do branching. You can't do that type of stuff that we typically associate with like an SVN or a Git or something like that. But uh, you can do essentially like bookmarking and then return back to those previous versions. Okay. They also and they also do actually have a pretty nice uh, setup for different types of environments too. So you can actually uh, you're always working in draft, and then you can go and publish it. So you make a version, then you can publish that version to your production or to an A/B testing system and that type of stuff too. And that's all built so, into the low yeah. code. Got it. So you're not integrating with anything like GitHub, for example. No, unfortunately not. That's one of the things that we've been, you know, for those of us who have been dealing with the system and been asking for, but at this point, it's just, you know, their own versioning system. All right. Makes sense. Um, and what uh, the deployment, you just about, you touched on this, that there's a publish opportunity. So you're mm -hmm. building these things and are there test environments you can publish to or how does that work? So you're always working in draft. So think of it as like, you know, Microsoft's uh, like an O365, you always have, whenever you're editing a document, you're always editing live on the system and then you can go and save off essentially and then mark those uh, things. So the draft is always like, you know, your working environment and all that type of stuff. And the integrations that they have with the different telephony systems, for example, or the chatbot systems, you can say this version is tied to this phone number or this version is tied to this chatbot API. Mm -hmm. And then you can keep on saying, okay, I now made a new version. You can tie that to that particular environment, which is, you know, tied to those uh, like phone numbers or things like that. Hmm. Uh, what's the cost? So it's all like, you know, like everything else cloud based, it's all based off number of minutes that you're connected, you know, okay. the number of minutes of, you know, audio it's listening to number of minutes of, you know, response that it has. So it's really, you know, think of it per transaction. Um, so for the whole hospital system that we have, which is 14 clinics, uh, and I think we're processing close to a hundred thousand interactions a month. I think our bill is like a few thousand dollars a month. Okay. And it's so, probably so much more than that in terms of, uh, salaries of nurses staffing phones. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, when we talk about that, I mean, we're, we're already ahead, uh, our next iteration that we're doing with the hospital systems is gonna we're gonna start uh, introducing some of the cool features, the stuff I'm really excited about. Oh, tell me about that. You know, so things like you know uh, outbound notifications. Um, you know, so being able to let's say you call in or you you submit for some blood work, and system calls you out. Well, a lot of the systems today they'll call out and they say your results are in. Call in to get your results. Mm. You know, so what would it you know wouldn't it be cool if it says hey you know David you're you know, this month your your cholesterol is really high. You know, it is at this number. Do you want to know more about that? And it can explain to you, you know, just by conversation back and forth, you know, what does high mean? You know, what does this number mean? What are some things that you can do? And then you can escalate uh, to a nurse if you need to. Yeah, I actually have that. I have uh, uh, I, I, nothing, nothing telephony based, but there's a portal that I go to yeah. to get my test yep. results. And I, you know, I have no medical knowledge whatsoever. I don't know what right. that means. Every <laughs> once in a while, there'll be a little star next to him saying, this is out of the range. And even that, I don't know. Is it, <laughs> right. Yeah. Is it really out of the range? High? Am I going to die tomorrow? Yeah. Is it, yeah, is it life-threatening? Is it is it better yeah. for it to be a little bit high or is it better for it to be a little bit low? Uh, you know, some things, some things is okay if they're low. <laughs> right. So one of the other use cases that uh, I've seen with uh, a, another automotive uh, manufacturer here in Michigan, 
Uh, they're using the exact same product. What they're actually doing, though, is a different take on it. So still tying into call centers, uh, what they're doing is they are actually having the system do what they're calling agent assist. It is bridging onto a phone call with a live agent, and what it's doing is it's listening to that, and then it's starting to recommend to the agents on the screen uh, like help-based articles, uh, you know, better ways to suggest uh, results for a user, things like that, instead of the agent typing. So let's say you call in uh, to this automotive place and you say, hey, my car is making this weird clicking noise. Hmm. While the system is listening to you and automatically doing those searches in the background, so the agent really doesn't even have to type these things in and it already knows your model, it already knows all this other stuff. So instead of the agent having to type all this in, right. it's you know essentially presenting the, the articles to the agent so they can just get you the best results right away. You know, So really helping that piece out. Another innovative use I've heard of this as well is a system that, you know, you have this tie into one of your more senior agents. So somebody who really knows the product, maybe a senior engineer or something like that. And in the interaction that is having between the user and the agent, it's starting to build tech-based articles and uh, like help-based articles for the, for the company in the background. So let's say you get four or five people calling in and let's say, you know, in Microsoft and in Windows, you know, People don't know about the control space, you know, M to move around or something like that. But one of the engineers, you know, keeps on mentioning this as something. It can actually start building frequently asked questions in the background using the taxonomy of what's happening in there. So the agent doesn't have to start typing these things up and figuring out, okay, you know, you know, because, you know, sometimes people who are great, you know, customer service agents aren't ones that you want to be writing your tech based articles or frequently asked questions or marketing data or things like that. It's really kind of freeing up all that extra stuff that an agent would do to make yourself more efficient. Yeah, and I like stories like that because I think there's a perception that people are moving to these automated systems solely in order to save money. And that's part of right. it. That's, that's certainly a, a, a part of it. But also, you can actually increase customer service in mm-hmm. a lot of cases if you do it well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's and it's all about getting the right people in there, getting the right, you know, technologies in place and really like you know figuring out the best use of these technologies because that's really what Absolutely. you know simply putting it in as you know, having it as like you know a front door to all your same customer service agents where then they have to repeat everything and all that stuff it doesn't make anybody happy <laughs> that, that is frustrating <laughs> uh, is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have no i mean that's that's you know that like i said that's my uh, current project i'm working on and you know sounds it's like fun been, it, it, it is fun. It, it's it's getting me out of just, you know, writing scripts for uh, different systems to talk to each other and really, you know, it gets out to that more human element and like, you know, the machine, like it's really like, what I like about this particular thing is it's a really light version of like an artificial intelligence machine language. Yeah. You build these intents, you build, you know, you start figuring out how is the system building this taxonomy in the background. And that way I don't have to worry about all the really crazy, like, you know, deep machine learning, you know, the, the big thick books and like, you know, the four year <laughs> degree on what machine learning really is. So, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a kind of a gateway into machine learning. Some of these tools that are, they're exactly. democratizing machine learning in a lot. Yeah. Of ways. You know, it's the same type of stuff, you know, when I'm, you know, playing with like the, you know, the, uh, Amazon Alexa stuff, you know, like, you know, building some of those, uh, types of systems, the, the voice bots and all that type of stuff, the exact same type of thing where, you know, you get to kind of play with these things, but not have to be a, a computer science major in order to figure out all this stuff. Because I'll be honest, when I went through school, this stuff didn't exist. And if it did, it was definitely a, a different world back then. So it existed, but you needed to own a supercomputer in order to do it. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, this is great. Where, where can people go to learn more? Uh, do a Google search for uh, dialogue flow. <laughs> And, and I, looked, uh, well, I the did, first... and I got cloud.google.com slash dialogue flow. Yep. Yeah. And then I think it, it lands you right on their intro page, and then that goes right into the documentation. Yes. Um, you can do, they've got a few videos. So, like I said, there's two versions there's ES, and okay. then there's CX. So, ES is really meant for I have a single question I want to ask and then go a certain direction. So, that's really the easiest to start off with, particularly if you're just building, like, you know, I want to build a really like simple decision tree or something like that. Mm, okay. um, so you can build it up and say, you know, like think of, again, a front door to a menu or something like that where, you know, do I want the hours? Do I want to schedule an appointment? Do I want to, you know, talk to an agent? You know, like basic decisions like that. 
the other product that they have is CX, and that's really about building what they call multi-turns of information. So I want to give a little bit, have a full conversation back and forth. And when I say multiple turns, it's multiple back and forths to get okay. a, a full conversation. So that allows you to do things like uh, implement uh, uh, like form fills. Like I can say I have six pieces of required information, and if you already told me some of them, I'm not going to ask those again. And it also lets you bu build in uh, context. So I know that you told me that you're already talking about, let's say, sports medicine, for example. I'm not going to ask you other stuff relating to radiology. I'm going to ask you only sports medicine type stuff. So that's where the, t the difference between the two products. The ES is definitely a lot easier to deal with. Uh, the CX is definitely a more powerful uh, system to kind of play with. So Okay. So it might be, if somebody's a n total novice like me, mm -hmm. uh, it might be wise to start with ES, build something simple, and then yep. evolve to yeah. the CX product. Yeah, and it lets you get into, the, like, again, the, the figuring out how uh, intense work and, you know, the, the conversational piece and all that. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Nick, thank you so much for your time. I've really learned a lot today. Yeah, and I'm you know really thankful for uh, technology to help us connect friends, customers, allies, and foes, and everybody in between. That's really what kind of like drives me forward, you know, as a technologist and an academic as well. So.